Hello. We are really welcome all the delegates speakers here. They will talk about the literature of Siberia. This is the round table devoted to the modern problems and issues of the national literature of the peoples in Siberia. We will talk about the Ural and Siberian literature. We will look at the Hanti Mansi literature. And we will also have also the representatives talking about the Sumerian literature. We have Maria Lublinsk, associate professor of the Department of Uralic Languages, Folklore and Literature. She's working at the Institute of Peoples of the North. She's also is working at the Institute of Linguistic Research at the Russian Academy of Science. We also have Svetlana Denislav, a member of the anti Mansa Autonomous District Writers Union. She is also works at the Institute of Applied Research and Development and at the Chief of the Men's Language Children's with some We also have Oksana Avesed Kasimke. She is a Nenet. And she's an author of the literary and ethnographic blog Ethno World, a little known to the literature of Op and Ugric people. Thank you very much. I'd like to show my presentation. Can you see my presentation, or should it even make it bigger? Yes, we can see your presentation. Can you see it in a good way? That's pretty good. Because it usually reflects the participation of the speaker in a particular events, and the word is also a participant of these events and it, the word means not only but as something a new some news or action well, and also participation of a human being in a certain event and it also means that the, that the law also covers here and if we talk about the folklore it has also deep traditions and if you are a folklore teller, um, it was a quite an, a narrator, you will believe these people will be pretty honorable. And I also would like to also an example of such a folklore action of the Samoyed peoples, for example, the love songs of Kai and Gerson, when a young man and a young lady who was had a band to talk to each other. They were singing songs and they substituted the words and songs. They used pretty old songs in this singing dialogue and it was allowed. Uh, the folklore symbols and subjects became a fundament for the literature of the Russian North. I'm talking about for the urban Greek, for the Samoyed people, and even for all the people in the Russian North, as, as it was said by Prokopi of Tsitsi, the great Nenet. Right, we could fire hidden every match and artists hidden in every nanites. This is an, a, an example how the literature was taught, and this is actually oh, how the first students of the uh, new no, of the Institute of Northern People were learning and studying, and this. Uh, local newspaper in the Institute for the Northern People says that, that every single people in the Soviet North would get a literature in its own language. 
nowadays we can say that writers among Uralic people are quite a significant count here in this tree we don't even see the last the modern writers because it is not all possible to track it because young people will start writing literal literal text and they also participate in contests and they get awards every single year and if we talk today about literary arts in Samayat and op Greek literature, we can really find lots of examples. Usually, we can see a short autobiography sketch or short story. We have also, for example, a, a singer by Tico Wilke. That's a story about a, a grandmother and a granddaughter who were lost on an island and how they were actually surviving there and it is a quite interesting short story with a good description of people's character and here we also have the short story by Pantele Monche Meta Two Hunters is the title that is a kind of a part of about the clash between generations and, and the story by Anton Perec, the youngest Vedas son, is also a very interesting one. That's about the, what happened to the boy during the October Revolution in Russia in 1917, when there was a fight against rich deer producers who were against the communist and it were good short story by Marim Yanikolov called two centuries and a half century that's about the uh, common lady this destiny and this lady was also within this revolution time and Mar she managed to find herself and Marim Yanikolov became also an editor of a newspaper used to work in Aryan Mark during World War II. Then we also had a lot of um, short stories devoted to the myths and to the folklore of the northern people. And these are more than uh, children's stories. For example, the novel by Inga Artiba, answering the great Nam call. Or, for example, the novel by Yuvan Shestal, a deity poem. That's a brilliant poem in Mansi, which is written with all the power able to, which is Yuvan able to show. In Nanet, we also had two. had also uh, two stage plays. Uh, one of them is by Ivan Noho Shaman. It shows actually the attitude to Shaman. It is out of 1937 and the uh, template by Prokofi Yevtisi, uh, written in 2000, and shows uh, the change in attitude towards the shamans, because shamans used to be the enemies of the people and now they are considered to be the carriers of local culture. If we talk about the, uh, the um, other written uh, stories and novels of the northern people, we should also take out the historical novel by Anna uh, Konkova and Gennady Sazonov, and the flow of the slow moons. This is a novel about the Mansi culture, about the history of this book and how this Mansi culture 
is actually surviving and facing the modern culture many poets and writers in the north write children poems and verse for example a very good collection book by leonid Lapso in my poems for children leonid Lapso also wrote a really brilliant poem about a nanit's boy which is called yedeka Edeke is the boy name, how he spent his childhood, how he was attending the school, how he was interacting with the external world. We have also lots of uh, literature books devoted to the nature. For example, the really beautiful poems by Alexei Pichkov, because Alexei Pichkov writes these poems in Russia. He speaks Nenets, and he also managed to organize a club of the young poet clubs in Naryanmar, and he also managed to educate several young poets. However, his poems can really bring over the northern nature and the northern philosophy and and so the vocabulary by yuri well he is also one of the fighters for the nenets rights and he also created the vocabulary topon toponymic vocabulary river again and he also tells why a certain name comes from whether this name is linked to folklore characters or it is probably linked to some real life events and uh, yuri managed actually to publish in seven language uh, the abc of a herdman or a deer boy and he also described all the peculiarities of a deer cattle management and it is a, a book is uh, written in nenets hanty and mansi is translated into english estonian and french so you can find this book also in the in, in internet suddenly poems about the nature this is, for example, there is a poem by Yuvan Shastalov, and Yuvan has a significant power in his uh, talent and can really bring over to the people the, uh, uh, the connection with the ancient uh, nature, because the northern people are really well linked to the nature. Yes, the nature, it is not only the world that people live in, it is also the world that people are really connected to, and the nature acts are also acts and laws, are laws for these northern people. And you, we can also read it in some also books about the nenets about the connection between nature and the nenets so i really try to give a kind of short overview of what is happening currently in the nenets literature certainly we are quite happy happy to have also new names We're really happy that the literature contents are running many northern writers usually start as journalists and they can really come to the big literature and then they can really really make more fame make it's their people and their homeland famous thank you very much marina it was a, a brilliant overview and even now we can certainly say that they're open ugric and some are yet people including nanets these are the people who still have a really lively language community that's why there are also 
authors able to write in a native language. Thank you very much. Please stop sharing your screen. And now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Svetlana Dinislava because she is an editor, she is also a writer, and she's also a researcher. And she is doing all her best for the sake of Mansi language. Please uh, tell us everything, what you know about yourself, about uh, those who support you in uh, preserving and developing the Mansi language. Uh, uh, good morning or good afternoon, dear participants, uh, delegates. We'll talk about the Mansi literature, about its uh, current state. We need to remember those factors which were actually before the uh, literature came up. And here it is quite important to talk about the oral of folks literature because it is probably the biggest heritage of the Mansi people. Usually the Finnish and our researchers were collecting it in the 19th century. Unfortunately, we do you have really few narrators. We can probably find a couple of them in small villages and all these things were actually collected when we had all these narrators and shamans, everyone who actually created all these stories. And thanks to the uh, Finnish and Hungarian researchers, we got uh, these uh, six books published in Finland and seven books in volume, in Hungary, sorry. In all these um, um, stories and books and books are being translated and become a real heritage of our people. And people started uh, really coming back to the its culture. Well, Ivan Shestalov and other well writers really are writing in a proud way about the Mansi people. But Marina already taught a little bit about Mansi literature. She also told, named you Ivan Shestalov, who is actually probably someone who founded the Mansi literature. And now I would like to tell you a little bit about the current state of our Mansi literature. I think it, this literature is developing and the most and the best fact is that we started getting young writers writing in their native language and these are uh, Mansi from the Sverdlovsk region and quite an interesting fact is that the Mansi in the Sverdlovsk region managed to preserve the culture and the language in a better way. We have around 100 Mansi there, and out of this 100 Mansi, we know two young Mansi who do the poetry. This Yevgeny Onyamov, he is a Mansi rapper. Some of them already heard this name, and today he lives in Antimansisk, and I uh, uh, currently the editive in chief here of our local newspaper, and he will be one of our reporters since Monday because he really feels the right word, and I think his poetry, his uh, literature can be real compared to Ivan Shestalov. When Ivan Shestalov was a young man in 1960, started doing poetry and writing poems, then he started writing short stories and normal novels. And Onem already wrote about 40 songs and poems because he writes in a very professional way. And he's also a professional singer. And he also has a very good people in his way who helped him to become a rapper. He also made lots of recordings 
and I do translate these poems into Russian because he writes in Mansi only. This is actually a trusty translation of a sense. It's a word by word translation, and I really wonder, I'm really surprised by his tenors. We also have Tatiana Bakhtiyarova, also from the Sverdlovsk region. He is working at the Open Oak Creek Institute of Applied Development, and he works in Neck, not so far from Sirkut, and he writes poems in Mansi. And this and I am, uh, saw for the first time these poems 10 years ago, and we published them in our uh, books. And she started writing fairy tales, and she created really good uh, children books. We like Epos, E is a night, and Pos is a light, is a night light. And she describes for the children why, for example, on the Mond is called Eplos. And also she had and the fairy tale Uliani is about a girl, and Uliani is a name, and she connects everything in this fairy tale with the nature because when a young lady writes these things, I think it is really, really valuable. Well, we also have Valentin Derman. He is a boy and he lives in the Moscow region and he is currently uh, studying in St. Petersburg. He is a student of a technical university. But uh, uh, his mother is also from the Svetlovsk region. And when he found out that he was a Mansi, he started learning Mansi by himself. He already wrote uh, two short stories two fairy tales, so he decided to write fairy tales. And we also have lots of writers writing in Russian. Most of them started writing fairy tales. And as soon as they get uh, children, they start writing fairy tales. Uh, most of, of the cases we have are poems and love poems. And when we started creating the uh, anthology of our literature, Heritage, it was in 2016, we get uh, 44 poems of uh, poems of 44 Hanti writers and poems of 37 Mansi writers and poets. And I think this figure is a really something what we should be proud of because even up to now, we still found about authors. And even a week ago, I was in Nefty Yugansk and I also met a Mansi writer, and his name is Vadim Rechkin. And this is actually a real poet. And in every single city, we write also new names, and every time. And our authors and our writers, they are also included in the Russian anthology, where we have also poems, the oral stories, and in every collection book, we have at least five R writers. This is, is the modern literature, and these writers, they also keep writing. More or over, we also have uh, those who can, uh, uh, adults like Maria Vinyavina is from Honenson, and she is also a unique writer. We have also many writers in San Paul, and all the uh, stories are already published. We also have a newspaper in Hantemansis. We have also a literature page where we publish these uh, writers. And I would like to tell you one more thing: when the literature was only created and found that our readers, when they started getting familiar with the literature of uh, Chaymeta, they started uh, reading uh, 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 Pushkin, Gorky, Nekras of Krylov in Mansi. Uh, so they got this opportunity to read the Russian classical literature in the native language. 
распространена, распространена переводная литература. И сегодня также мы... Translations are widely distributed as well. We now translate works by contemporary authors, but the... The Institute is now working on the children's anthology. And we have 10 to 15 units, and namely printed sheets, and they're likely to be released next year. Another point for me to highlight is this. The Obsko Yegor Institute features a um, well done, nicely presented website. All the books are available for download in PDF. There are trilingual editions in the Kanti, Mansi, Russian, and English languages. These are books with illustrations for children. Each year, they publish 10 to 15 new books, and you can actually download a digital copy in PDF if you're not able to come by a print copy. Our editorial office of our newspaper deals with our native language mother tongue. We schedule Zoom conferences with one teacher and five students. These adults, these students are adults, these are institute employees, and these are school children who want to study their mother tongue. So on a regular basis, we hold these one-hour Zoom sessions. Regarding literature, we will be releasing a collection of stories in Russian and a general collection of Mansi works in Mansi. Thank you very much, Svetlana Silvestrovna. You mentioned plenty of names and quite fortunately, Jenny will be part of this. because this is a very fitting environment for his work. But Zhenya himself, he often says that the rap I'm creating is going to start a wave of new authors, and no one actually joined him in his rap initiatives. There are Kelty Sami enthusiast, but no one else emerged in this market. There was a, a Karelian, Karel person by the name of Andrei Gorshkov. Andrei works at the Karelian National Theatre. He released one CD, one album, and he then stopped working on poetry. By the way, he was assisted by Natalia Antonova in writing these verses. She is the author of the so-called language Nas in Karelia. And their cooperation ended. But hopefully, having your editorial office as a basis, there will be still room for further development of uh, ethnic literature. We have next, Sanna Umovna next up. She will share some facts about her blog dedicated to the Nenets folklore and literature. And this is a new page in literature and making this literature popular. This is a new shape, a new format, not only to preserve that literature, but to make it more popular. Oksana, what actually motivated you to start this blog? Uh, what kind of uh, feedback are you getting? Good afternoon. I represent the Nancy people of the Yamal Nenets Autonomous District. I'm a newcomer in literature. I started uh, writing tales for my children one year ago. 
Well, uh, storytelling is our family tradition. My parents lived in the tundra and they would tell me stories every evening. I had some free time at work, so my children suggested that I should write some tales of my own on Yandex Zen. They came up with a name for it, and so thus I started writing stories, tales. Within a year's time, I posted 15 tales, fairy tales, two short stories, and a couple of verses, poems. Well, actually, most of my works are dedicated to my children, and in my works I convey the traditions of my people, like my parents would as we lived in the Chum traditional housing. There is a close connection to the economic activity, and up to a certain point, I, it never occurred to me that I'm supposed to convey my culture to my children. As I became older, it struck me that I had to convey it to my children, and I started writing. The main topics are nature, how to put it, it's about culture and nature of our homeland. This is a way for my children to learn more about our culture, nature and livelihoods of our ancestors, grandfathers and their ancestors. Please make sure you visit my Yandex Zen page. The landlords of the tundra, the owners of the tundra, was presented at the Voice of the North competition so they picked it and printed it so my piece is now available in russian nenets and english in these three languages and it's special dialect of the nenets language this is the local lesnoi that is good dialect of the nenets language of the Yamal Nenets Autonomous District. This is the very first piece in this dialect. If we refer to Yuri Vel, his dialect differs a little. Our dialect differs significantly from the Tundra dialect. There is no literature, there is no alphabet and there is no vocabulary. In Nepet, made an attempt to establish an alphabet, but a long time passed since then, many changes were introduced. Two books were released in the wood dialect of the Nenets by Maria Prihotka. These were printed. Therefore, I'm doing my best to publish these works and to have them translated from Nenets into Russian, from Russian into Nenets. My uh, plans include publishing my book to be printed in both Russian and the word dialect of the Nenets language. Thank you, Oksana, thank you for taking on this literature initiative, not only being um, native speaker, not only being an employee, even though you're not, a, even though we refer to people who are not professional linguists, as we discussed it with Svetlana, many of writers have some journalist background. Aksana's case is very special, it is by vocation that you started promoting your native tongue, my mother tongue. And literature is a beautiful way to preserve to preserve the language in its shapes. Regarding the 
dialect of Nenets you mentioned. What is the language environment? In the Yamal region, uh, there's been a shift towards the Tundra dialect of the Nenets. In 1996-2000, we were taught at school in the Tundra dialect, but nowadays our educators are doing well and are doing the best to teach in the woods dialect as well, so-called woods or forest dialect. When I attended school, there was no way to study at school in our mother tongue, so we could only learn our mother tongue from our relatives and parents, from stories, short stories and tales. As we lived in a chum, uh, this is a traditional housing. My parents would tell me lots of stories and tales. Back then, I didn't take this seriously at all, but now I regret not having put them down from the very beginning. So a lot of fairy tales uh, got forgotten this way. Since you learned these fairy tales directly from your father and Nenets man living in the tomb, what is their genre-related specifics? The Yakuts have the Unuho, the Evenki have the Nakan. And these are not only fairy tales, these are epic tales, these are pretty long. It would normally take several days to listen to them completely. At times, it would be interrupted and continued the day after. So it could take several days for a person to tell such a fairy tale. Probably there is some difference in dialects in the Nenets language. What is the general specifics? Are these short tales that can be told within a matter of five minutes? Or are there uh, epic type tales that will take much more time? As I can recall, my father would tell me fairy tales. And the, the the process of telling them involves singing. And as a kid, I failed to remember lots of things. He would start one evening and then carry on the day after. Normally these were fairy tales. Regarding the short stories and tales, they were told by my mother. So these magic fairy tales involve singing and chanting, actually. And this chanting could carry on for two and even three days. And you could hear the cracking of firewood in the oven. You go to bed and your father starts telling a story. The tomb was pretty small. You can perfectly hear the telling inside the tomb. Mother would listen to these tales as well. It was uh, six of us, six children, and our grandmother as well, and all of us would listen to these fairy tales as we fell asleep. Sometimes uh, tales were emotional, involving uh, a deer cup, and I would cry. So sometimes I would feel empathy, and it made me cry at times. Normally, these tales are about nature, magic fairy tales that's involving transformation. Uh, but of course, each fairy tale has a meaning to it. Most fairy tales were about animals, right? Were there human main characters, like a famous Nenets people who was the savior of their people? Yes, we had tales like this, there was a giant, a giant Nenets man who was the protector of his land. We have a witch, 
парних ко. This is the name of the witch. There is a man. This is a folklore character. It's a monster, actually. I uh, included this monster in my works. It must have come from the Ob River, Ugric peoples. Well, my father is considered to be an Inuit from the woodland area. But there are also country people from the Kazim River. They migrated. I studied their lineage. There are the Kazim and Kazam last names. So we actually share the same ancestors. So these two peoples are deeply intertwined in their lineage and history. So my, it turns out that my father and my grandfather are county people. And this is something I realized recently as I studied my background. So it was a white, an eye opener to study my origin. Will you further refer to Hanti topics? Yes, I will definitely look into this further. I will make more research on that because my father's ancestors are Kanti, while my mother is Hanti. Thank you for these presentations. I could see Svetlana Silvestrina pointing down the name of the blog mentioned by Oksana. So I believe this cooperation will further help to establish contacts and support cooperation because these people are closely related and you have lots in common to share. Our round table is coming to an end. I would like to thank our participants and presenters. And this is when we say goodbye and thank you. Bye-bye. All the best.